principal assignments that prayer was designed to achieve or produce in the life of the believer and we're discussing prayer now the first and in my opinion the most important ministry of prayer in the life of a believer is as a tool for transformation write it down please more than petitions more than receiving things from god the real assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a system that sponsors your transformation luke chapter 9 please from verse 29 please write it down and you may want to read it with me if you can see it projected ready let's read together one to read and as he prayed uh-huh the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening this is jesus this is what prayer achieved in his own life as he prayed as he prayed not before he prayed while he engaged in the ministry of prayer something started happening to the fashion of his countenance something started happening to his garment the assignment of prayer more than just a tool for receiving things is for your growth and transformation when you pray you evolve to superior dimensions of yourself prayer is a system that submits you to these spiritual transitory systems that means bring a weak believer just born again weak and timid submit that person accurately to the ministry of prayer and you will get a stronger higher more discerning more spiritually intelligent version of that believer are you seeing that an attack on your prayer life is an attack on the platform for your transformation that is why you find a lot of believers who have been saved for a long time but there is nothing in their life that defends the longevity of their salvation prayer the holy spirit in partnership with your spirit helping you to grow helping you in expanding your organs of interaction in the realm of the spirit if you want to be transformed you want to grow you want to rise and increase in discernment it is generally called transformation you must submit yourself to the ministry of prayer please say transformation. transformation this is very important the real ministry of prayer is not just warfare or praying for petitions the average believer prays because he has a need and he has been taught that only god can provide the need and there is a place for that but in order of priority listen to me if the primary sponsor of your prayer life is your need you will stop praying when your needs are met this is why you find out that the more believers keep getting supplies in their lives and growing their prayer lives go down because a possibility exists that you can attain a level of success where from a human standpoint you do not have any need there is such a possibility and god desires for us to get there what then do you do with your three hours five hours I understand that you can pray for five six hours because the overwhelming presence of your needs is enough motivation to remain there <laughs> are we together pain can give you energy oh yes it can and you can stay and pray and flog it out with destiny but what then happens when the word of god is now beginning to prevail over your life and destiny even the bible lets us know that we can forget god it says let it not be that when you have built houses and this and that has happened to you deuteronomy chapter 8 it says that you say my power and the might of my hand has given me this but thou shalt remember it's a caution meaning you can forget everyone say transformation when you submit yourself systemically and diligently to the priesthood ministry of prayer especially praying in the spirit
one of the ways that you frustrate the flesh is to pray in the spirit because the flesh is not given the liberty of understanding what you are saying so it is compelled to fast while you pray you see that now hmm. so you pray in the spirit and the bible lets us know that while you are praying there is a mystery to your praying in the spirit as far as your transformation is concerned that praying in the spirit you give the holy spirit the liberty to search the mind of god and bring to manifestation in your life that which is consistent in the mind of god say transformation number two very quickly the second assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a platform for making requests and obtaining promises that means when you desire to make requests and to obtain promises in the kingdom the bible designed prayer to be that platform that allows you to interact with the heavens to make requests and to obtain promises mark 11 and verse 24 please let's hurry up so we can pray mark 11 24 jesus was teaching and here's what he said therefore i say unto you please look up look at the scripture it says what things soever ye desire what things soever ye desire when not if ye pray when ye pray it says believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them receiving and having is in the place of prayer by the way i hope you know they are not the same thing you only have what you have received you cannot have what you have not received you see receiving is a spiritual transaction that is done by faith having means the experiential manifestation so the bible says what things soever ye desire it is in the place of prayer that you believe that you have received and you shall have it philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 6 and 7 the bible addresses the issue of anxiety it says be careful the word careful there appropriately put is anxious it doesn't just mean to be careless be anxious for nothing the bible says but in how many things everything by prayer and supplication many of you may have heard me say that it is true that prayer does not do everything but prayer must be part of everything that you do where prayer is not the key prayer becomes the hand that helps you hold the key in any case it must play a role to the opening of that door it is either prayer is the key directly or prayer helps to strengthen the hand that holds the key the bible says in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known don't assume god knows it uh -uh. let your request be made known let your request your desire to excel let it be made known your desire to have a great life let it be made known your desire to prosper let it be made known god is not afraid he's not prohibiting you from communicating your desires this is the balance to prayer because there are many believers who feel guilty making petitions and asking for requests in fact here's what the bible says it says hitherto you have not asked for anything jesus is speaking he said ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full you do not need answers to prayer to have joy but you need answers to prayer to have the fullness of joy you can praise God in the midst of the storm, but you cannot have the fullness of joy until your prayers are answered. Are we learning? So prayer number two is a platform for making requests and obtaining promises. And one of the ways that we engage, listen, when you begin to pray making petitions before God, one of the classic ways that God answers your prayer is giving you a token of the manifestation of the kingdom that creates an atmosphere of peace listen the bible says the kingdom of god is in righteousness peace and joy that every time you see these three factors cohabiting in a life or in an atmosphere the kingdom has come within that time 
so when you pray you search for one or more of these when i'm praying over a request how do i know it has been answered number one by faith but number two i search for these threefold manifestations of the kingdom within my atmosphere of prayer i search for peace i search for joy and my confidence is that what i'm asking is consistent with the ways of god so righteousness has been fulfilled there are you learning now but one of the most classic ways that god speaks to men in response to their making petitions is peace psalm 85 and verse 8 learn this so you know when to stop in prayer how do i know when to stop over a request how do i know when to find rest it is not just when it manifests you can know you have received the bible says and i will hear what the lord will speak for he will speak peace peace is not just what you have it is god's language you must learn god's language he speaks peace are we learning very quickly number three what is the third assignment of prayer to the believer and in the life of the believer the third assignment of prayer is as a tool and a platform for spiritual legislation you can put decrees and creation prayer is a tool for creating realities and possibilities in the life of the believer spiritual legislation job chapter 22 and verse 8 job chapter 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 the lord is speaking to someone here i just saw light on someone and the lord is saying it's been the desire of your mother that you step into levels of the prophetic in prayer that your mother has prayed for a long time and the lord is telling me that that person i don't know whether it's inside or outside but i just saw an anointing come on that person please help the person that tonight that prayer is going to be answered it is it is a desire of your mother this is what i'm hearing and i just saw light just heading there please pay attention we'll pray shortly spiritual legislation job 22 and verse 28 those outside if you are with me shout hallelujah it says thou shall also in addition to the things you have done you shall decree a thing and it shall be established not unto the one that heard you decree unto you who made the decree don't just hear people make decrees and expect to be a beneficiary of their decrees alone that you create your possibilities out of your own decrees thou shall decree a thing oh i'm a husband and a wife my husband is praying for me the bible says there is a dimension of creation that depends on your own decree I, i'm a member my pastor is a faithful prayer warrior he prays for me there is a place for intercession but listen to me when you want to make decrees and legislate spiritually creating possibilities around your domain you must learn the art of decrees in prayer are we learning yes thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in my ears so shall i do unto who not unto your neighbor unto you who did the speaking and whatsoever adam called it that was the name so when you make decrees in prayer the lord is my light and my salvation i decree and declare my path is as a shining light don't let anybody tell you that is just baby christians talk that's how we reign in this kingdom believe me when i tell you this he said let the redeemed of the lord say so don't just think so say so this is this is a, a a dimension of god's kingdom 
that is activated through words you are perpetually under the mercy of situations and circumstances until you know how to make decrees you step into your shop and you begin to make decrees you make decrees listen did revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 not tell you that we have been made unto our god kings and priests believe the bible in its simplicity any quest for maturity that makes you to negate these truths is destroying you the power of decrees the power of decrees this is the day that the lord has made the bible tells you who made the day so that you know what to expect verify the character of the one who made the day to give you an assurance of how the day should look like the bible didn't say god and satan made the day satan also waited for god to make the day to be part of it this is the day that is my revelation that's what i believe this is the day that the lord exclusively made i expect the signature of his love i expect the signature of his wisdom i expect he said i know the thoughts that i think towards you say the lord they are thoughts of peace this is true in the place of prayer it affords us the opportunity to begin to create our realities not hope that it happens no creation did not stop on the seventh day god only rested listen don't just get excited for nothing i want you to really believe what i'm telling you i can tell you why many of you do not have anything happening in your life because you have cheapened the power of creation in the place of prayer you have thought that no I'm, I'm a matured christian i shouldn't be speaking i am blessed i i live a victorious life no no before jesus died he made decrees that he will rise again if jesus did not speak he would have been surprised on the third day he did not just rise because the holy ghost came he sent a word to wait in the third day because you see words are not bound by time you can send a word into february march april these words become ushers they wait for you do you believe what i'm saying yes sir jesus your jesus kept speaking and said he would die but certainly on the third day he will come back so when it was the third day the word was activated have you spoken to your february did you speak to your tomorrow or are you waiting for someone to just tell you something no. that when men say there is a casting down I, I i select from the provisions that the word allows and i declare that for me it shall be that there is a lifting up that a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side and none will hurt me with my eyes i will see and i will believe i will behold the reward of the wicked i live a very busy schedule and i travel a lot and i know that one of the easiest ways for the devil to kill anybody is through accidents and through all of these things so i have to find the scriptures that create the basis of my fortification i can't assume that just because i'm a preacher no the realm of the spirit does not respect status it respects your your engaging the truth of god's word the lord therefore he makes even my enemies to be at peace with me in the name of jesus my path is as a shining light i shine brighter brighter no better yesterday in the name of jesus the fullness of my days i fulfill hallelujah listen listen to me dear people 
words and food are the two ways jesus taught us to live read your bible that when it has to do with man and living you live off two things number one bread number two words man shall not live by bread alone but in addition to bread add words to your bread if you want to live don't just eat and believe that you will live words 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 i carry the favor of god in the name of jesus christ all who see me desire to bless me i carry the favor of the lord distinguished by his wisdom distinguished by his power this is what i believe hallelujah listen can i tell you your realities are not just defined by what scripture says they are defined by the truths of scripture you understand and you can appropriate through this priesthood ministry of prayer look what prayerlessness robs you it's a risk to step into a life that you did not send words to usher you into it's a risk pastors we have to pray don't take ministry for granted pray that leads me to the next point what is the next assignment of prayer number four warfare and intercession let me share with you something in two or three minutes and then we'll pray the prayer ministry was designed by god to be a tool and a platform for warfare and intercession john chapter 10 and verse 10 satan is called a name that you should not forget he is called the thief someone say the thief there are many names that satan is called he is called devil he is called satan that means the accuser is that true he's called that old serpent according to revelations but jesus himself calls him the thief indicate by raise of hand if you desire to be best friends with a thief indicate by show of hands if you are interested in being close to a thief jesus calls satan the thief not a thief there are many but there is none like him the bible is clear about the the the, the dexterity of his ministry that the thief cometh not do you know what that means you never see satan around a place until there is something to steal something to kill so when satan comes around you he has helped you verify that there is something in your life that is worth stealing worth killing and worth destroying that means satan does not waste his time if you see him near your family near your ministry near your destiny he has come because there is something that is worth stealing killing and destroying jesus said but i am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly satan is called the thief first john 5 19 gives us a very important information about this cosmos this world system and the world that we live in it says and we know that we are of god please help me complete that scripture ready one to read and the whole world lie it my room or my 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 shoes lie on a carpet that means the carpet must be larger than my shoes is that true to be able to lie on it he's telling you that the whole world wickedness is beneath and the whole world is on it that means no matter where you run to wickedness has stretched far enough to wait for you he's giving you that information that your location is not necessarily an advantage by default wickedness is everywhere first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 I pray God is speaking to someone tonight. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Be sober 
apostle peter is teaching us now he says be sober the next statement is be discerning vigilant alive in the spirit sensitive he says why because your adversary not the one quarreling you in the office that's a puppet the devil that is the real enemy the one disturbing you in the office is only a slave to an influence bigger than him your real adversary is the devil as a roaring lion the bible says he walketh about seeking whom he may devour hmm. ephesians chapter 6 from verse 11 ephesians chapter 6 he says put on not part the whole armor you need the whole armor if you are to stand against the wiles of the devil that means satan has perfected the skill of stealing destroying and all of that that you will need to shield yourself with the whole armor of god I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustains me. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head listen when you see people excel in life and ministry it's not just because satan has stopped attacking them they have mastered the art of using prayer as a weapon of warfare and spiritual intercession woe betides any believer who does not perfect the understanding of warfare and intercession especially in this end time you will become a victim of a plethora of casualties it is true it is true second mm. corinthians chapter 10 very quickly second corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 let's start from verse 3 second corinthians 10 and verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh this is a very powerful information that paul is giving us that even though our interaction is within the realm the three-dimensional realm the realm of the sen the senses the flesh we do not war after the flesh verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare he says so we have weapons that they are not carnal they are not man-made but they are mighty through god here's what they do to the pulling down of strongholds next verse it says casting down imaginations is the greek word yazar and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ warfare there is a real devil and is determined to make your 2022 miserable if you allow him i hate to be the bearer of bad news but i have to be honest with you he will not stand and watch your marriage thrive he will not stand and watch your finances thrive he will not stand and watch your children go out in the morning and return back in peace but thanks be to god which always causes us to triumph our confidence is in the fact that we have been given the arsenals of victory when it has to do with the ministry of warfare and intercession i wish i had time there there are there are there are certain truths that we have to understand when it has to do with the ministry of warfare and intercession the first thing you have to understand is the three principal access points 
satan has only three access points in the life of the believer number one covenants number two disobedience number three ignorance this is the only access point from genesis to revelation every time you see satan attempts to prevail over a person a people a family it is one or more of these three access points covenants systems of authorization that can outlive the person who initiated it there are rules of engagement Number two, disobedience. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Everything responds to you in this kingdom at the instance of obedience. And then number three, ignorance. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds ignorance can shortchange you from the fullness of the victorious potential that comes with this faith life that you are a part of hallelujah hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people he says are destroyed for the lack of knowledge the lack of knowledge the lack of knowledge so he says i commend you to god acts chapter 20 and verse 32 now brethren he says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace what does it do it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance the inheritance is only when you are built up because an heir for as long as he's a child that he differeth not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. Warfare and intercession. 